welcome my good friend Alex Vantarakis to the show today. We are entrepreneurs, business, and finance. Alex has been uh, especially a good friend for, uh, we were talking about pushing 20 years now. Um, we originally met, uh, he joined the Entrepreneurs Organization in Dallas when I was on the board in charge of membership. And uh, he is uh, uh, pushing oh, nearly half your life now as an entrepreneur. So yeah, for that. We'll talk more about that in, in a few minutes. But thank you. Uh, his business, uh, the Van Group, actually helped my wife and I buy a business. It helped us sell a business. He and I bought a business together, uh, had someone else run it, sold it. It was a win. It wasn't a big home run, but it was a win. And uh, he's actually invested uh, with me before. We've been to each other's houses. We're, we're wives are friends. We're, we're uh, especially good friends in, in my view. Thank you for being a friend, Alex. Um, but we're here Thank today you. to talk really about all the interesting things that Alex has done and continued to do in the world of business, entrepreneurs, and finance. And uh, also some ways that he gives back to the community, like so many entrepreneurs I know do. Uh, but he's doing some really unique and special things in my view. So in addition to being a um, having the Vant Group now for 25 years this year, you also own another business called Thornhill Catering. You bought and sold your own businesses throughout the years. You invest in other people's businesses. Uh, you've won an ethics award, uh, at least one at the Van Group. It would take all day to go through <laughs> all the things that you have done and all the successes, um, challenges you've had. And uh, I know that uh, I've actually officed in your building that you own uh, for a while there. And so I know a lot of your people very well. And uh, they've always been uh, happy uh, to be at the uh, Van Group. So let me first ask you, I mean, I know most of this, but of course the folks don't. Um, your company is a business valuations. It, it helps people sell their business. Uh, it's an investment banker. Um, why don't you give us a thumbnail about- uh, Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for that kind intro. Um, so the bank group, uh, started in 1999. I bought and sold a business in 98, and I was enamored with the process of buying and selling. Uh, so I took a leap and started the Van Group, and luckily we've still been here 25 years later. Um, we are a boutique mergers and acquisition firm. Um, easy translation. We help people sell companies, buy companies, and value companies. We play in what's called the small to medium business space which is essentially uh, businesses that are valued between one and $100 million, which is roughly about 80% of the businesses in the United States. And one of the things that I thought was interesting, and I, I know uh, some of this, but you might restate it, is uh, how you decided to go into with the small business market. Because you know a lot of these businesses, people think of them as small, but they might be a million, two million in revenue. And I know... You've done some that are less than that. And I think your motivation was you saw a gap in that area and you saw a lack of professionalism uh, in that area. Uh, and Absolutely. Thought, and you got a passion for the small business owner. Um, Ab absolutely. So my, my, my parents were entrepreneurs. Uh, they would buy and sell small uh, businesses. Um, they were immigrants from Greece and came over and, and bought a business. And, and uh, that's kind of where I got my upbringing. Uh, you know, I had a choice, you know, uh, was I going to go street and work for Morgan Stanley and, and work for a, a large bank? Um, and, and, and that just wasn't the culture <laughs> of the lifestyle that I wanted. I moved to Dallas, God's country down here, and I loved it so much that uh, I had a choice to uh, either go with a large firm or, or start my own. And and you're right. Uh, I have an affinity uh, towards the 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 small business entrepreneur. And, and let's be clear, a uh, hundred million in revenue is still considered a small business. So when we say small, we're not talking about a local, you know, uh, uh, a candy stand on the side of the road. These are real legitimate businesses that employ tens, if not hundreds of people. Um, and really, it was a numbers game. Uh, since 80 percent of the businesses are under 100 million in revenue, um, I wanted to be able to take the professionalism of true Wall Street investment banking and apply it to the small business community, which is one of the things that sets the bank group apart. 
Uh, it doesn't matter if we're selling a business that's worth $1 million or $100 million. They get the same quality of service. And I know that uh, along with setting that level of professionalism that you have with your clients, you also have a lot of people with uh, advanced degrees in your organization. You went back to school, got an MBA. A number of your um, people to work with, you have MBAs or even law degrees. Um, so not that that's necessarily a requirement, but um, I think that's also something that uh, sets you apart. You, you get people with some uh, with some experience. Absolutely. Um, you know, having an MBA in finance, having an undergrad degree in finance, um, most of everybody on my team has that. Um, and I think that is a, uh, a fundamental requirement um, to understand the financial side of it. Uh, but the more that you do deals, um, I have discovered that the financial component is probably 10 to 20 percent of an entire transaction. And uh, when we're selling businesses, you have to understand uh, we're not selling Apple stock uh, to some unknown buyer, an unknown seller that's an entity or a corporation. We're dealing with a business owner that's owned their business for 30 years, that that, that business is, is like their family, the employees, their family, and it's a very emotional decision. And then we're dealing with a buyer um, that it wants to get into entrepreneurship, or we're dealing with a private equity group that's looking to expand their portfolio, but we're really dealing with individuals. And I, I would trade all my finance degrees for a psychology degree, every single one of them. <laughs> well, you have one in the real world. Uh uh and, and that's uh one of the great things about the bank group is you've written books on it but you start with someone from the very beginning set the expectations let them understand what the process is like give them a book or two to describe it um the value in the business what what is real so many people over promise and, and under deliver and i think if anything you would probably uh over under promise uh to start with because you can't guarantee anything and uh, and I know you work with people sometimes years uh, ahead of time in advance of them selling their business. Um, do I have that right? Absolutely. Um, I have yet to be meet a business owner that thought that his business <laughs> uh, was not worth more than it actually was. Um, even the businesses that I own, of course, I even I think my businesses are worth more than than what they can sell for because. I have tremendous pride in them. Uh, but the one thing that we're not at the Vant Group is yes men. Um, you know, we are very selective in the clients that we work with because we spend an inordinate, inordinate amount of time uh, teaching our clients uh, what the market is like, uh, what buyers look for to buy a business, what type of financing options are available to buy a business. And all of those factors ultimately derive value. And when that value matches our clients' expectations, we are successful almost 100% of the time. When those two numbers do not coincide, um, we either show them a path to get to the number that they want, or they wind up going elsewhere. Um, and unfortunately, you know, you mentioned we won the Ethics Award. Um, I take tremendous pride in that. Um, you know, we are M&A advisors, but there are monikers out there called business brokers, um, Essentially, we provide the same function, uh, but it would be uh, like, uh, you know, picking up a day worker to work on your house rather than a licensed professional construction person. That's a very rudimentary example, um, but uh, that that's really where we set ourselves apart. And what a great analysis. I know that uh, the interesting thing, too, is you really understand business, and part of the reason is you have bought sold so many business and you own a pretty good sized business right now called Thornhill Catering that one of my companies did some work for. And uh, you have enough expertise that you can um, delegate and put people to run that. And um, if you're in Dallas, you should look that up in addition to the van group if you're looking to uh, buy or sell business or get uh, get a device. Another thing I think is very interesting, uh, it's such a dynamic environment because you're always meeting people that are active and doing things on the go. Um, and many of them become friends for a very long time, uh, even if you don't help them sell the business because they keep it. But that process is pretty personal when you're talking to someone about, as you say, their business. You get to know them. Your your team gets to know them. I see them at your house. I see them at your get-togethers. 
Uh, do you find that uh, rewarding? Uh, tremendously rewarding. Um, you know, we've only got one life to live. And, you know, how we spend our days um, uh, should be important to us. And, you know, I could have made money a whole bunch of different ways, or at least I think I could have. Um, and what I've discovered is, you know, I, I want to make money, but I also want to help people. I want to have fun. I want to take care of people. I want to create real relationships. And, you know, when you work with a seller for six months or a year to sell their business, um, it behooves you uh, to become close to them, to understand how they tick, uh, not only uh, to help you uh, sell their business, but really to help coach and guide them throughout the process. And, you know, when people see that you're taking care of them earnestly and it's not just a paycheck, um, friendships form. And you're right. Uh, you know, I look at my my friends that come over that hang out with me, you know, a, a big portion of them are, are ex-clients. Well, one thing I've always known about you is that uh, you've done things to help people, whether it's formal charity or someone that needed a loan or just people that need a lift up. Uh, sometimes people that had big falls that were successful, some people that never got, you know, far enough up to, to fall and really needed a lift. And now you formalize that into something called a clip for life, which is a, a charity and uh, you are quite involved with that. That is a real enterprise. And I know a lot of success stories already, but um, why don't we wrap up with uh, a quick, or as long as you would like, uh, description. Of, uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I'd be more than happy to spend the entire time talking about Equip for Life. So Equip for Life is a men's ministry that I started. Uh, I gave my, my life to the Lord seven years ago, which coincidentally, are the most prosperous seven years that I've ever had in my life. And it's not because you go to God and ask for, for providence, but because when you truly change your heart and change the way that you interact with people, uh, you become a better father, you become a better person, you become a better friend. Well, guess what? You become a better business person and people can see that and it, and it resonates with people. So yeah, Equip for Life is a men's ministry started in 2007. Uh, we host uh, four weekly Bible studies. Uh, we have a podcast. Uh, we do a lot of retreats and connection activities. And then I've also created what's called the Benevolence Fund. So a lot of the people that come to my men's ministry, they don't have the economic benefits that you and I have. And and I see these people struggling uh, every day. So I've created a fund. Uh, think of it as a uh, safety net fund. Uh, you know, we help with rent or to buy a car or to go on a mission trip or to consolidate debt. And, and we just want to show that, you know, men can love men in a way that uh, is pure and in a way that doesn't exist today. You know, men are supposed to hide their feelings and they feel uncomfortable talking to other men. Uh, and that's why there's so much depression and anxiety going on right now. So we've created a, a space where uh, the Lord leads all of our discussion and men can be men and we just love on each other. So admire that uh, and you and uh, boy. I can't think of a better thing to wrap up on than those last few words. So thank you. Uh, I will see you soon. Uh, actually, tonight, you have a, one of the things you do for the community is have a group get Absolutely. together, of people to network uh, for personal and business at your office building. And uh, uh, so uh, thanks again. And uh, I'm glad you were able to come on. Absolutely, Henry. God bless you all. See you tonight.